Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, this brings us one step closer to the end times. What am I talking about? Well, let's take a look at this article right here from biometricupdate.com. It says NIST Georgetown CDT to enhance digital identity guidelines for public benefits. Enhance. So for those of you that didn't know, they already have digital identity guidelines. This is going to enhance them. The U.S. Department of Commerce's National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, is tailoring its digital identity guidelines to better support public benefits programs. These programs assist beneficiaries with essential needs such as food, housing, and medical expenses. The project is a collaboration between NIST, Georgetown University's Beck Center for Social Impact and Innovation, and the Center for Democracy and Technology. Under Secretary of Commerce for Standards and Technology and NIST Director Lori Lacoscio emphasizes the importance of balancing access and security in benefits delivery. So notice again how they use these flowery words in there. Their press releases, what they put out to the public. Well, balance, access, security, benefits, right? So, so these are words that people don't generally find objectionable versus what we're really seeing, which is invasion of privacy, control, tyranny, right? No, they use those words, then people say, whoa, 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 what are you doing? So instead, they know to say, well, balance, access, and security, and benefits delivery, right? <laughs> she noted that different populations faced varied needs and barriers, which this collaboration aims to address by bringing together diverse communities. In other words, it's really different people need to be controlled in different ways. Different people need to have different ways and means for controlling them. We need to make sure we're addressing all of those things, right? Because the idea that these benefits, which have been available, because what they're talking about here in terms of benefits is anything the federal government pays in a benefit. So it could be, say, what we would, might call food stamps, women, infants, children uh, benefits, or veterans benefits, Social Security benefits, Medicaid, Medicare benefits, any sort of benefit given out by the federal government, which they've been doing for decades, right? For decades. Now, granted, there's bureaucratic problems and red tape, but do you really think any of this will address that? No way. This isn't going to make this more efficient, a better way to delivery. What it does is give more power and control to those who seek it. So it says, the plan is for the project to utilize NIST process of community engagement. Here we go again, community engagement, who's against that? To gather input from federal partners, state benefit program administrators, IT and cybersecurity leaders, digital identity experts, technologists, advocates and individuals with direct experience in the public benefit system. So not the actual beneficiaries. We're not going to we're not going to talk to the people receiving the benefits to see, well, do you want a digital ID? But we're going to talk to the people who are familiar with these programs. Is there anything we're missing that'll uh, be an impediment to our goal of controlling the population, right? That's 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 what's unsaid here, but instead it's community engagement. Well, their community, their community of technocrats that want to control every aspect of your life. Says Lynn Overman, executive director of the Beck Center, highlights the goal of developing human-centered solutions to improve government services, particularly for vulnerable populations. She expresses pride in partnering with NIST and CDT to enhance security, privacy, and equity in benefits applications. So again, just to, we saw this before, we talked not long ago about the Australian digital ID. When they put out the press release for that, they used the same type of language. It's 
to enhance security, privacy, equity, to give you freedom and liberty, right? <laughs> the exact opposite of all the things that this means for the general public. But this is how they're able to push this stuff at, and people don't uh, raise a fuss over it because it's, it's again, it's the proverbial frog in the boiling pot. You throw the frog into already boiling water, it's going to leap out. It's going to say, wow, that's super hot. I want to get out of there. But if you put it in the water and you just slowly turn it up, it will cook. And that's what they're trying to do to us. So as the goal is to create, and here's the word they used in, in that Australian digital ID story, voluntary resources for public sector organizations, including a profile of NIST digital identity guidelines to help evaluate authentication and identity proofing practices for specific benefits. Alexandra Reeve Givens, president and CEO of CDT, stresses the need for carefully developed identity management solutions focused on equity, privacy, and security. So right, the exact opposite of all the things you're going to get, right? This, this is typically how government works. You know, if we want to, you know, kill children, we'll call it the Save the Children Bill. That's pretty much what what they do in Washington, D.C., and governments all around the world. And that's what we're seeing here. They talk about equity. No, when they roll these types of programs out with digital IDs, central bank digital currency, they're going to be using this to provide anything but equity. As we said before, they might say, well, this person is part of a traditionally ostracized uh, population, a population that's faced hardship. So they get a mortgage at 1% interest. But this person is part of a traditionally privileged cohort of people. So we're going to make their mortgage payment uh, interest 10%, right? So it's not going to lead to equity, these types of programs. Privacy, digital IDs, <laughs> it's not the route to privacy. It's the exact opposite. It's putting everything about you in the government's hands. And of course, security. And they go, security, you know, we're because the government's behind it. Well, no, we know the government's had all sorts of data breaches over the years. We read about that all the time. Here they want to centralize everything about you into these digital identities. We spoke before about how they want to put, well, your e-prescriptions and your medical records a digital driver's license. Again, not sure why I need one of those. What's wrong with the <laughs> with the driver's license I've always had? But they want to put everything about you digitized in the centralized location. And if you think about it, so when that gets hacked, the hackers get everything about you. But somehow that equals security, right? And of course, putting it all in the hands of government, that's security, right? <laughs> You can, you, you can be secure in the knowledge that they now completely control everything about you. If you didn't think that was true already, you can be secure in that knowledge now. So she emphasizes that people should access public benefits without technical barriers or privacy compromises and, that tr and trust that the systems will function fairly and securely. You should just trust us, right? What are you worried about? Just trust us. Last year, researchers in the United States examined the way in which authentication and identity proofing is used in the U.S. to give access to public benefits. Of course, I'm sure they'll look at, well, look at these ways that uh, the system has been gamed or uh, criminals have come in and pretended to be somebody else and received benefits. Do you really think that the government program, whether it's a paper paper shuffling program or a digital ID is going to be ahead of the criminal element. No, people will still find ways to game this system, to steal identities. It's not going to solve anything. It's going to make the problem much worse, take away everybody's privacy, put them under the control of government. It says in a growing call for accountability, 
Governments and policymakers are urging AI developers and users in both consumer and public sectors to proactively identify and mitigate bias and discrimination in AI systems, according to a recent report by CDC. I'm not sure where this growing call for accountability, what they're talking about. The only one I've heard of is that there's a bias, a left-wing bias built into these systems. There's certainly no biblical <laughs> basis for the AI systems. So it's a there's definitely a secular bias in these AI systems. I'm not calling for any fix to that, right? <laughs> But guys, this is uh, the path toward the Mark of the Beast system. This sets the stage for it. We're seeing this. This takes us one more step closer. So we see this here in the United States, the development of these digital ID guidelines for the receipt of public benefits. Of course, you live in the United States. Did you vote for any of this? Do you remember the the big debate they had in Congress over this. No, because they're just doing this. And they're just doing this in Australia. They're just doing this in the European Union and everywhere else around the world. Again, we talked about this recently when this passed in Australia. And they use this flowery language. Oh, it's all voluntary, right? There's nothing to worry about. Trust us. There's nothing to worry about. And then voluntary becomes, well, really, are you really going to keep uh, persisting and you're you know, not doing this, non, your non-compliance, you're persistent in your non-compliance. You really are a headache until, uh, if you want those benefits, you got to do it, right? That's what, it, that's what it's going to come down to. And the same thing will happen with the central bank digital currency, which will be the benefits that come out of these programs. So they do this slowly, guys. You know, a lot of people, we had a, a Substack video recently. At the end of that, I addressed where people are saying, well, when's all this stuff going to come? You keep saying this stuff is going to come. And then we looked at evidence that it has come, right? It's here. They're doing all of these things. But guys, they're not going to come out one day and say, Hey, we're holding a press conference. This brings us one step closer to the Mark of the Beast system that we've been dreaming of. Uh, next is your digital ID and your central bank digital currency, and we're going to make everybody have to do this. It's going to be mandatory. You won't have any say in the matter. They're not going to do all that. There's not going to be one date on a calendar where they just roll all of this stuff out. You know, there will be for the Mark of the Beast system at the midpoint of the tribulation. But this setup, this creation of this platform that's going to be used to the infrastructure, this is all happening slowly, just like that frog in boiling water. Slowly, 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 while people sleep away their days, slowly, 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 then all at once, just like that, people will wake up one day and the digital ID will be required for every aspect of life. And central bank digital currency will be required in order to transact in the economy. It's just going to happen slowly, 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 then all at once again. What they do is they'll roll this out voluntarily. And those that don't participate, you know, they'll do just as we saw in the last four years. There will be incentives. Hey, cut, sign up for your digital ID and you can get this cheeseburger and these fries. You can get tickets to the Yankees game. Which, by the way, you can't use cash at Yankees games anymore. We might, might address that in a future video. But a little bit, you know, they'll offer all these incentives to get you to adopt the digital ID that's voluntary. And then once they've gotten everybody that they can that route, then they'll start to say, well, you're going to be punished in this way. And you know, we're going to make your benefits will be delayed. This will happen to you. That will happen to you if you don't sign up until eventually they just say, you don't sign up to it. You don't get the benefits. And 
for many people, that's going to mean living on the street, living in complete poverty. The same thing will happen when they roll out the central bank digital currencies and have no doubt that that's what they're trying to do, guys. They've been talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, running all these tests. They don't do that to not implement it. It's coming. And what they'll do is the same thing. The incentives will be there to adopt. And then, of course, they'll make the banks adopt both of these programs, the digital ID is required, the central bank digital currency is required, and it's voluntary unless you want to do business with a bank, right, or a credit union. Yeah, if you want to be outside of the banking system, then sure, you don't have to have those things right now. But then, of course, the banks are going to require every business that does business with the bank to meet these same guidelines, which means that if you want to be a customer of one of these businesses, then you have to have a digital ID and you have to use central bank digital currency. So guys, can you see where all of this is going? None of this being voted on by anybody. There's nobody calling for this in the public, but it's just slowly, slowly, slowly going to be implemented until one the day arrives when one day where people wake up, finally they wake up from their slumber and realize, wait, how did we end up in this world where I need a digital ID to do everything and I can't pay cash and they're using this programmable central bank digital currency that they can cut off at any time, they can put restrictions on it, it can be taken away from me, it can be fenced off from me, I have no control whatsoever of this over all any of this, over any of my finances, where did this come from? As it came from this slow trickle, little by little by little, and then all at once. And guys, none of this should surprise us, because as we pointed out, this is what the Bible says will happen. Read in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 17, it says, He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead, and no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. So this is the mark of the beast that's being described here. Again, a digital ID, a central bank digital currency, is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will appear first when there's an antichrist when there's a beast, but it will appear during the tribulation period. We're not in that period right now. And it will be a sign, an outward sign of allegiance to the antichrist, of worship of the antichrist. That's why the Bible is so specific in saying, do not take the mark. You're condemned eternally if you take the mark. It's not something people will do accidentally. It's not something they're going to be forced to do because, well, the benefit program I had required this digital ID. It's not going to be anything like that, but all of these things are setting the stage for that moment when the mark of the beast is implemented on the world stage. So guys, we're seeing all of this happen. Again, we can be down in the dumps about it. You can fight against it. We should fight the good fight. We should stand for righteousness. But guys, we should be excited that we were chosen by God to live in these times. He put each of us here for a specific purpose. And we need to be pointing these things out to as many people as possible. This is a perfect opportunity to tell people about the hope you have in Jesus Christ. Again, I've talked before about if you're standing in line somewhere and you see somebody use cash, Say, well, don't get used to that, right? And they'll say, what? What do you mean, don't get used to that? What are you talking about? Well, they're going to outlaw cash. Go to this digital currency. Soon they'll have digital IDs. Yeah, I've, I've heard about some of that. Even, even if those people reject what you're telling them now, especially when you tell them, well, you know, the Bible foretold this almost 2,000 years ago in the book of Revelation, but even if they reject what you're saying now, plant that seed now and let it grow because as these events take place and transpire, they will, they will remember what you've told them. 
And then they will say, that person was right when they said these things were coming. And you know what else that person told me? That person told me that I'm not good enough on my own to get into heaven, that no matter what good works or good deeds I do, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for my sins. They'll remember that you said that. They'll remember that you shared the gospel with them, that we all fall short of God's perfect standard, that the wages of sin is death, according to the Bible, and that that death means eternal separation from a holy God. But the good news, the gospel, is that while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ came to earth, lived a perfect life, and then he died in our place on the cross. He shed his blood so that we could have forgiveness of our sins. He died on the cross, and then he rose again in victory. And that's why, guys, we have hope in these hopeless times when government after government around the world is rolling out uh, digital IDs, central bank digital currency. They're talking about more and more ways they can control every aspect of our lives. If you don't know Jesus, this is a pretty terrible world that we see around us. But if you do know Jesus, you can have hope knowing that this is not your home. Jesus is in heaven preparing a place for you right now. So make sure that you're always ready to share with other people the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. God willing, I will see you on Wednesday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to visit my substack at brittgillette.substack.com. There you'll find my latest videos and articles, as well as notes where I share the latest news headlines, the articles I'm reading, and the videos I'm watching. Subscribe for free, and each new post on Substack will be sent directly to your email. Just scroll to the bottom of the homepage and hit the subscribe button. As an added bonus, your first welcome email will include a link to a copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.